ಹಂಚವಾಹಿಣಿ ವಿಣಾಧಾರಿಣಿ ಹಂಚವಾಹಿಣಿ ಜಗತ ಜನನಿ ಮಾತಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಮಾತಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಮಾತಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಶಾರದ ಮಾತಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಮಾತಾ 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 ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ವಿದ್ಯಾದಿ ದಯಾನಿ ದುಃಖ ಹರಣಿ ಜಗತ ಜನನಿ ಮಾತಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ ಶಾರದ ಶರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ 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 ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ 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 ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶಾರದ 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 Today, we have gathered here to do the Devi Puja. This Puja was performed many a times and Devi was requested by the devas to save them from the tyranny of devilish people <coughs> today i feel the same way that we are now in the grip of a funny situation that there are people who are 
Ramson's David side. And also mesmerized by them, who are trying to do something which they should never have done. But they don't know that there is a climax of everything. And that point has arrived where all the good people, especially the Sajogis, should put all their mind to the destruction of these horrible personalities like Mahishasura. In those days, it was very simple because devils came as devils and you could see them, that they are devils. And all their behavior proved that they were devils. Why they did it? Why were they cruel? Because so-called human beings as they are, they are not. They are by nature devilish and they want to do something by which they can destroy human beings and good human beings. It is evident that the time has come for them to be destroyed. In no way I could be against Islam and ever to criticize Muhammad. He was divine, no doubt, and tried to do divine work. But out of that divine work, these stupid people have come up who accept those devilish people. You'll be ever amazed to know that In Islam, there are seventy-four groups. They say we follow one religion, but they do not. Out of these, some of them are really evil people. And they call themselves by the name as Devbandi because this is a place in India. And also they are called as Wahhabis. I have been knowing them since long. Because in our household, in my father's household, we had lots of Muslim people working as cooks, as drivers, as other servants. These Wahhabis are very interesting people because they don't believe even in Muhammad Sahib. So if you tell them that Muhammad Sahib has said such and such thing, they say, no, we don't believe in Muhammad Sahib. So whom do you believe? We believe in Allah. Have you met Allah? Have you seen Him? That you are believing them? But in their whole behavior, it was cruelty which was innately built, very cruel. And whenever my father saw that, he asked them to get out. Because always had a sinister practices 
by which they used to treat others. I never knew that it will come up to that stage. And they are mostly, they were from Afghanistan, can you imagine? Mostly. Of course they tortured Af other Afghanis also, and wherever they went, they had a speciality that they could be very cruel. Not all Afghanis, no, not at all, but some of them. And they came to India from Afghanistan, and we have different types of Afghanis. Some were very loving, kind, helpful, very nice people. And some of them were very cruel. First we didn't understand what is this. But because my father was a scholar and a scholar of Islam, he told us these are not Islamic. They call themselves Wahhabis and they are not Islamic. I can see that today so clearly. Not that in other religions or other groups there are not bad people. But these Wahhabis were secretly working out different groups. There are not many. And that's what my father had told me, one day they will become very explosive and they might try to completely ruin the world. First I couldn't understand because after all they looked like human beings only. He says, he told me, they are absolutely camouflaged. And once they start their cruelty, you will not know what to do. We had one invader in our country, called as Muhammad Shah Abdali. He was a very, very cruel man, very cruel. And he used to even kill the Muslims, because his concept was, that you should not worship Muhammad Sahib. Because Muhammad Sahib said that I am not divine. I also used to say the same, to save from the stupid people. For years I used to say I am not divine. But when they felt my vibrations and all that, they believed. But those who believed, in Muhammad Sahib, were never understood by these people. Very, very cruel and because they don't even believe in Muhammad Sahib, you cannot argue with them on any point. You cannot argue with them what is written in the Qur'an, because you don't believe in Qur'an, you don't believe in Muhammad Sahib, you believe in Allah, who God knows from where do they have connections. But gradually it was surprising that they could mesmerize, as we have horrible gurus who come as gurus and they mesmerize. We have seen them, people being mesmerized. So many are being exposed and so many are going to be exposed. But mostly, they were the people who were interested in money, in getting lots of money somehow is uh, in the name of religion. But that time, people didn't see their cruel methods and their cruelties. This cruelty started growing 
And you know we have been to Nizamuddin's Audia. In that place only I discovered there's a madrasa. Madrasa means a school. And in that school they used to admit small children. And it was so well planned that God alone know, I mean I can't say it, that there were hundred and twenty madrasas only in Delhi. Now nobody knew what they are teaching there, what they are mesmerizing, how they are doing this. It so happened once I went to this uh, place, Nizamuddin, and there I found people singing songs and all that. And I found in them real feeling for love. They felt my love very much, all of them. They started coming to Sahaja. But I didn't know there was a Madarsa in that place. I asked them, why is it? Here the vibrations. The Ramuddin was an Aulia. And how is it the place doesn't have good vibration? In between I used to get very bad vibrations. So they told me, Mother, there is a Madarsa. Now look at the evil, how it works. Normally evil used to work like this, that, that it would go and form some groups, some wars, and kill people. They were few people, but they had cruelty as their religion. Whichever way they lived, they wanted to be cruel. In those madrasas only, they had people who used to tell them how to be cruel, how to hate. So, education in hatred started. And that education of hatred was very well woven through these madrasas all over the world. Now, as you know, Pakistan and India was always fighting. But this time, Pakistanis realized that if we fight with India in that way, we'll be called as terrorists. So, they said no. We'll have no terrorism in our country. But they are the ones, stupidly, this new fellow, had sent about sixty-five scholars, ambassadors, to Afghanistan to study in those madrasas how to become cruel. Anyway. to teach hatred. Of course, there are many Muslims who are not. But if you do not respect Muhammad Sahib, and you are supposed to be Muslim, what will come out of you? So all these wrong ideas grew up. And Islam got divided into many groups. It's all right, but to have this kind of a group which is against all humanity was the most dangerous plan. 
I don't know how many Muslims also knew about it. They spread this madarsa thing all over the world and people coming out of that institution became very, very cruel people. First cruelty was to the women. Women were treated with such contempt and absolute no respect of any kind was given to them. This itself shows that there was no one to control them. It's not written in Quran. It's not described by Bambasa. He says, God is merciful. He is peace-giving. Whatever he did was absolutely divine, no doubt. But some of these people, the way they took to satanic forces, people started misunderstanding Islam. Islam means to surrender. Those who are surrendered are you people. Surrendered means those who have given up all their lust, greed and all these enemies and are above normal people. Another thing was very interesting to note that Muhammad Sahib had said that at the time of resurrection your hands would speak. That he clearly said. Naturally, because it was written in a language which was all poetic, People can want to, if they want to, they can twist it. But Muhammad Sahib never, never would have said, it's very, very shocking that in these modern times, that people have taken to such crooked ideas. But for that, the reason is that people also develop resistance for them. Jews they developed a resistance for them. This hatred is responsible. And this hatred between both the sides, I would say now, these are two different... It's very evident. Now, in Sahaja Yoga, we believe in complete, innocent, simple existence together. And that people believe that there is definitely different groups of people. Now, 
Now, what is our duty? What are we supposed to do? First of all, <coughs> we have to introspect. Supposing you are a Hindu, born, you should sit down and find out if you hate anybody because he's a Muslim. You can't hate. Because somebody is a Muslim, you can't hate. Because you are a Muslim, because you are surrendered. So how can you hate anyone? If you are surrendered, you are surrendered to the Divine. And how can you then be against the Divine? So these <coughs> misleading thoughts and ideas should be given up. Supposing you are a Hindu, so if you have no business to hate anyone, That is for definite. Now the word Hindu also comes from the river Sindhu, because Alexander couldn't say Sindhu, so he said Hindu. And on that point, many people have built this horrible hatred. In India, but cruelty was not their theme. That was the saving point. That they didn't want to torture people. So this aptitude to torture or to hate people is coming from other sources. And the source is, as you can see clearly, that they openly hate. To hate is a very bad quality. One of the most dangerous things is to hate. And so you all must know. All right, now we are having a... To me, it is very painful to think that we human beings, we hate others. When you know that love is such an overwhelming, beautiful feeling. But why then you take to hatred? Because people have impressed you, they have told you lies, that's why you hate. What an achievement! First to be a human being and then to be a person full of hatred. Now what will be the next, I don't know. It was all right in those days for Goddess to kill. Goddess used to kill her such sweet people.
It's a very sad feeling that God has created human beings. From amoeba to this stage, how can we hate some? And this is what has happened. Now, of course, surge is different. That surge is know how to enjoy the love. They like it, they enjoy it. You can see that. And if somehow you people could manage to remove this hatred, somehow, somehow, with your own willpower, denying and defying all that is being told to human beings. I'm sure it's a very difficult world where those people who came on this earth went through all kinds of education, wanted to improve the conditions, the relationships, friendships have fallen into the depth of hatred. My heart just weeps. At what time I have come on this earth? Where I have to see human beings hating each other. They talk of love and hate. It's a very serious thing that you, who are the children, they'll end up like this. I mean, I have experiences, if I tell you, I'll be shocked how people have fallen down to the depth of evil nature. It's a understanding we have to have understanding about ourselves. Do we hate somebody? Do we get ideas that we should do? Do you have such things in you? Just find out. Do you hate other people? Ideas are rotten, absolutely, for a human mind. The ideas which are completely like the animal's instinct are absolutely no good for human beings at all. But that's what is happening and is coming forward. It 
If you are poor, all right, by hating, you don't become rich. If you are in any difficulties, then your duty is to remove those difficulties, but not to prosper on them. All this has to be. It's very surprising that we are not bothered at all as to what we are doing. Yeah. You have to have proper sense of understanding. Where are we going? If you have misunderstanding about somebody, better take it out completely. They try to trouble you, all right, but don't have bad understanding about that person. Very surprising that we never see those things, how ugly they are and how funny they are, how they ruin our personality. You may be able to correct some people, All our activities as such a good, I never realized were so important. We have to give so much time. Not to bother about nonsensical, frivolous things, but something serious that is within us or without. That must be taken out. If I ask you how many people you hate, you may hate just twenty people. And See, the thing, whole atmosphere and all this fills me with such remorse that I just don't know what are we going to do, the surge of this. What are their plans? Will you please look, look into yourself and think what constructive work we are doing and what destructive work we have been doing. You need a big shock to understand this. I like the way we have programs and pujas and all that. But if you ask my inner being, I know it is very, very unhappy, very sick. At this time, what you have to do as surgeons? As surgeons, 
minimum of minimum, you should put full attention. And then you have to take a pause. See, the trouble with such yoga is that you all start enjoying yourself and then you don't see around what is happening. Now, I must tell you, I am now in the midst of war between myth Is it a area? Is it a I don't know what should I say? Is it within us there is still lurking some kind of a weakness that we do not try to fight? Our business. I would now request you all to meditate on yourself and see for yourself what is wrong. It's a big shock. And to reduce this shock, what can Sahaja Yogis do? What can they work it to blast this horrible ways of human life. It's possible with the power of love you can manage, but we must develop that power in our hearts. Think of it. It's a big lesson now for all of us to see for ourselves, are we all right or we go on hating others? What is the function of our mind? Is to hate or to love? And this love, if it enlightens you, You'll be amazed, you'll be such a big force for me. I cannot fight the whole thing alone. And I have to have people who really develop their love and nothing else. That is one of the challenges now for all us all of us, all the Sajogis, all over the world. It's not only the fight between believers and non-believers, not only the fight between Sajogis and non-Sajogis, but this is a fight where we are all one and we are going to fight it out. At every stage we have to be much more subtler. It is very, very essential to see to the point today, are we 
also part and parcel of that evil thing that's working out? Or are we free from that and prepared to fight it? It's a big fight and I hope it is conclusive. After this, there will be no more of cruelties to human beings, no more fights, because this is a fight between the Rakshasas and ourselves. It's not ordinary. And this has to be explained also to those who are supportive of evil forces. Only thing you can say, Mother, how are we to know who is against and who is not? We are knowledgeable. We are surgeries. You know who is on the wrong side. I know Sahaja Yogis can save and can bring them to the right path of knowledge and love, but be very careful with the propaganda of evil that is going on. I want to touch the deepest part of your heart. We should reconcile. I'm sure you all will understand the magnitude of danger that awaits. Maybe there may not be any human beings left, maybe there may not be any children left, because if this kind of thing is working out, it's very difficult, very difficult. My whole existence gets shaken, gets shaken up. You all should see in every nook and corner of life, where is this talk going on? Where are people talking of cruelty? What's happening? Whatever I think, uh, it's not one, it's not two, it's all of us. The fight that I am having is of a serious nature, no doubt. But if you all can fight collectively, how much we can work it out? My all efforts, understandings, powers, 
everything is now in your hands. And that's what you should be prepared for, not by just reading something or talking about it. You have to build up within yourself the power of love. I'm sure with the opening of the Sastrara you will do. But try to read something, to understand something with the power of love. It's a very deep subject, and when you talk about it, halfway I'm inside, halfway outside. But I have to tell you that you all develop this, and only that will form a very strong opposition to these the evil doers, as they call it. My complete blessings are on you. And I want all of you individually work it out. How many people you know? How many people? This you have to find out. I hope you people have understood what I want you to do. A new generation is coming up. All of you, all of you are in my heart and I love you very much and I want you people to come as soldiers to fight with me. I am also told that there are some people who are forming groups and this. Extremely negative attitude. At this time, what we need is a complete solidarity. So all such people whom you see, tell them to behave themselves. No use making them such okay. I'm sure it's really heartfelt desire of mine that you should become really soldiers of love and peace because that is why you are here. You are born here for that. So enjoy yourself.
Seven married ladies, sorry, seven married ladies in the organizing countries, just two from each country, please. Yeah. 
Jali ko 
sadness and intensity. Shri Mataji, you in thy form as the Devi, as the protector of this universe and this creation, who, are, who you are now at this time amidst, in the middle of the battle, the final battle between good and evil. Shri Mataji, today we want to show you and we want to express that you are not alone and that we are with you and that this, your children, your army is ready to move, Shri Mataji. And we are awaiting your command and we are awaiting your instructions and we are waiting for your divine leadership, Shri Mataji. And on this occasion, we, on behalf of all the Sahaja Yogis of the world, want to offer this sword to you. And this sword is the symbol of our total dedication to you, Shri Mataji, of our total surrender to you, of everything we feel for you, of everything we have given to us. Shri Mataji, please accept this sword and use it for, the, for whatever you, Shri Mataji, consider right. Please.
Yeah.